actually lethal. <laughs> what sort of people would go out and buy or breed or own a type of dog like this? Well, that's, that's the, uh, the other part of the problem. The majority of the individuals out there at the moment with these type of dogs um, are predominantly the criminal element. They're individuals who either because of their social standing, um, the reason that they want the dog has more to do with the job the dog can do for them. So they're a sort of virility symbol or something Absolutely. Like that. It's, it's all part of this sort of macho ethos. And is it time to act now and do something about them? It was time to act a long, long time ago. Thirteen years ago, we warned the government that they had to address the situation uh, before it got out of hand. They failed to do so, and uh, we're getting there. Now, are you acquainted with this book, The World of Fighting Dogs, by uh, Carl Semensic? Yes, I am. Uh, what do you make of it? Um, it's a, a book that's catalogued. Um, catalogues rather the uh, the fighting dogs um, apart from the uh, the chapters from either point of view um, it's a dog that turns up uh, commonly in the houses which I uh, which I visit in the course of my duties individuals who fight dogs individuals who use dogs to protect drug premises you come across this book quite a lot now here's Absolutely. a key question what is the relation between dangerous dogs the dogs that are causing damage to people on the streets and uh, fighting dogs well, fighting dogs have been trained over many, many centuries to do the job which they're best at doing, and that is to either kill or maim an opponent. Um, if that aggression is turned towards a human being, then that's when we have problems. Well, uh, we have Dr. Semensik. Uh, thank you very much for coming over. We've flown you over from the United States. Good to see you here uh, in the country and on Central Weekend. As the author of this book, Dr. Semensik, you surely must share some of the blame for the cult of dangerous dogs. Absolutely. And, uh, absolutely not. The maiming of people? No, absolutely not. The, uh, you use the word majority. Certainly the majority of pit bulls are not kept by uh, drug dealers. The majority are kept by people like myself, people like him, people like many friends of mine, and uh, a mutual friend of ours who's uh, one of the directors of the ASPCA in, in, uh, in New York City, the largest uh, animal shelter in the United States, certainly a humanitarian and a, a pit bull enthusiast. These are not uh, dogs that are kept, maybe some are kept by drug dealers, if I can, and that's just unfortunate. If I can just interrupt you one second, you do print the, uh, the rules of pit bull fighting in the book. Yes. And you, you also say, you, you give uh, little tips as to how to prepare a dog for a fight. For example, you say, uh, dehydration minimizes the flow of blood through wounds and there's all sorts of little tips for the dog fighter. So how can you say that you're not glorifying the fighting of dogs? Oh, well, I, I think book? maybe I am glorifying the fighting of dogs. I think there is some glory attached to the history of these dogs, which is not to say that I approve of dog fighting by any means, but uh, certainly there's glory in combat. Well, can they be nice, cuddly, lovable pets, these dogs? 99.9% .9 of the pit bulls in the world, here as well as in the United States, are exactly that. Lovable, cuddly pets, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, Pit Bull Terriers? Potentially. The problem is you can't breed aggression after 200 years out of an animal. And if you bring it into the home, you try and suppress it, um, sooner or later it's going to snap. And if it snaps when you're making the tea and the kids happen to be in the lounge, um, we're all familiar with the results. Well, it's, it's a rather confusing book, Dr. Semensit, because uh, for the first, the first page, you obviously you uh, dissociate yourself from dogfighting. The rest of it, you seem to as you almost admit, they glorify dog fighting. I am not almost admitting, I, uh, there's glory to it. There's glory in that combat of history. What's glorious about a dog that will fight and then perhaps uh, go out and maim a child? Dick Stratton, uh, author of uh, a series of books from the United States also on pit bulls, said uh, the world will always love a fighter, a born fighter, and I think that's true. Well, um, what is the most uh, dangerous dog that is uh, at large on the streets that we may, walking through the park, walking up the street, come across? Well, we've said it so many times. Um, I have to say yet again, it's potentially the American Pit Bull Terrier. Of that, there's no doubt. Any large dog um, is dangerous if it's been irresponsibly bred, irresponsibly brought up, and can do damage. The Rottweilers, the German Shepherds. Statistically, the smaller dogs, the Terriers, are going to bite more often. It's the larger dogs, that, of course, that have the, uh, the power to do more damage. You're pretty fascinated with these creatures, these Pit Bull Terriers. Yeah, I must admit I am, yeah. It's a bit of a morbid curiosity, though, isn't it? Uh, no, loving puppy dogs, I don't think, is a morbid curiosity and that's all these really are well we have with us actually joe graham thanks for coming in joe you're the editor of what's the magazine called pitbull news pitbull news now it's obviously you're an expert on pitbulls let's just see how strong they are we have a bit of film to watch here some uh, you organize shows like this it's a it's a show of pitbull strength and if we look at the screen i think we can see just how strong the these animals are contest of which dogs weighing a few stone will pull over a ton to goad them along, owners use children's balloons and stuffed toy cats. Come on, 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 come on,
Are those lovable puppy dogs? Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you've seen a dog pulling a cart. Pulling a cart has got nothing to do with biting people. The dog is just enjoying itself. It's a, like a physical test. Um, a pit bull enjoys any sort of physical activity. Yes, but it has been goaded into doing it by a, a uh, and stuff. Well, it was looking pretty vicious uh, to me, Joe Graham. No, it's just looking excited. He's looking you know? happy. Yeah, That's what he's looking. It was, having, it was really having a good time. The dog's yeah, basically enjoying itself. And as for the aggression of pit bulls, they're aggressive animals towards animals. What sort of stuff uh, goes in your magazine? Anything that concerns the pit bull scene will, will appear. Well, dog fighting and stuff? Um, yeah. Mm. Well, that's, that's illegal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's also, uh, you do time to time publish short stories. And I, ha I have one here that was in a, an edition of one of your magazines. I'm not going to read it out. Uh, because uh, I don't want to offend any viewers, um, but it's actually entitled An Attack on a Child from a Dog's View. That's not, um, that has never appeared in my magazine. It has, Mr. Graham. And there are phrases in it like um, child underneath dog, um, taste of blood. I'm really not going to well, read any of it. I'll have to take you to task. I've never, ever printed anything about a pit bulls attacking child. I don't know where you got that from, but it's not from Pitbull News. Well, you, 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 you have a glance at it, see if you recognise it. Tim Voss, what about this magazine? Um, it's horrendous, in simple terms. In the world of animal welfare, which I live and work in, um, I think I can categorise this as being right at the top of the tree. This is um, the latest issue of Pitbull News, and quite simply, um, following a, a half-hearted disclaimer on the first page and a cartoon, uh, we go on from an editor's corner to letters, um, which include attacks, um, dog fighting, information on how to avoid the RSPCA and other police agencies. Um, we have animals at stud, we have um, articles by Dick Stratton that was just mentioned before, and then finally on the end of uh, every Pitbull News we have the results page and what disturbs me particularly about April 90s edition of this particular magazine is that for the first time there are three full pages of results. Now let me briefly tell you what that is. That's for instance Butcher's Pie versus Tony's Crunch. Pie is a Patrick line and Crunch is a BJ by Rolo. And it's a fight described that lasted two hours and twenty minutes. The winner was Pie, an already one times winner. Um, a dog is a champion in dog fighting if it's won three fights. It's uh, a grand champion if it's won five, and it's a register of merit if it's sired offspring, which go on to then uh, win in the pit. The final page of this magazine carries an advert for a dog called Champion Scotsman's Max at Stud for 500 pounds. Underneath it says that Max was a Pitbull News Dog of the Year in 1986, and the first official champion. He can also sire offspring capable of delivering the goods. And surprisingly, the phone number attached to this is, in fact, Mr. Graham's. It's not my dog, though. Who's is champion Scotsman's Max, then, well, Mr. Graham? I'm not prepared to tell you that, but he's not mine. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you tell me who he is? Well, I would have thought that was obvious. Because it's illegal. Because the sport's illegal. Yeah. But what I can't understand is that Look at it from the point of view of these recent attacks, Mr. <coughs> Graham. How can you justify uh, training dogs to fight when you know that those dogs are being given whatever instinct they have in the first place? Those dogs are being given that aggression. They may be going through a park and they may attack a child. Oh, Does because, that worry you? Yeah, there's, there isn't any direct relationship between the people tell you desire to fight and the desire to bite people. I'm sorry, that's, that's false. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely false. Do you own a pit bull? They, no, Do you I own a pit bull? No, I don't. I, you work, raise pit bulls? I work with them all the time. The, cor the correlation between them. American pit bull yeah. terriers attacking, Sick. essentially, is that Sick. because on, the on. American pit bull terrier has been absolutely. trained to attack, it's brought into the domestic environment. Once it's brought into that environment, the aggression that it has pent up inside it is given no outlet. If a child approaches it, and animal psychologists have proven this beyond all reasonable doubt, the child is approaching at eye level to the animal, the dog can interpret the other animal as being another dog. It's bitten once, it gives off a high scream, a high pitched scream, and as soon as it screams, the animal interprets it as being a wounded animal. So your dogs are cleverer than that. Yeah, they don't mistake children for dogs. Rubbish. 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 Right, some gentlemen, gentlemen in the audience, what would you like to say with, that, with, so with the tie? Frankly, I find the whole business sickening. 
You don't live in this age, you're barbarians. And I'd like to ask you, if your child was attacked by an animal, like this little girl the other week, it's not just the damage there. Who is going to take the blame for it? If that child had died, it would have been murder. And, and how would you expect to be treated? Well, do you want to answer that, Mr. Graham? Me? Well, my dogs don't attack children. All right, you've said that. Now, um, uh, David Appleby, uh, animal behavioralist. I know you can't see animal psychologists because they don't really have a psychology, don't they? However clever they are. But uh, can you form some correlation between with an animal with, that is trained to fight another dog in the most vicious uh, contest? Would that be liable to attack a child? Right. Well, the point I'd like to pick up on is the statement that the dog would see a child as another dog. In fact, this is true. Dogs are imprinted on human beings in the first 12 weeks of life. We know that if a dog doesn't see human beings or other dogs in the first 12 weeks of life, it cannot cope with either of those two species. So given the fact that most dogs are brought up in human company and in dog company, they associate both as being an extension of their own society. So they could indeed interpret a human being as an extension of its own pack. We heard that, uh, you, you deny it appeared in your magazine, but I can assure you it did, that, this. that, that, that article. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, having read this now, I can explain what this is. Okay. It's a fictional tale with Bam Bam from the States, and what it's basically about is a dog that's been brought up with a very poor owner, been left out, been ill-treated all its life, been left out on a chain, never seen anything, basically. Um, it's basically an indictment of poor ownership. This. Very it's not. It's not glorying in children being bitten by pit bulls. The man that wrote this would be very much against anything like that. All right, that's a matter of opinion. We've got there uh, a, a, a dog attacking a child, a dog's eye view. Now, you had a very different eye view, Beverly Smith, because you saw an Alsatian and a Rottweiler attack your friend's four-year-old daughter, Caroline Williams, this very week, yeah. didn't you, Beverly? Yeah. What was your eye I view? It was terrible. It is absolutely terrible. I had the child in my arms, and the dog didn't even look at me, just looked at that child. So what do them two people over there think about? When, when a, a dog has got a child, right, and they teach dogs to bite and to fight, it's bloody ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. Who taught so, the Alsatian no, to fight? So, so never mind if it had if been a pit bull, he might have killed that child. Dr. Semensik? Yeah, let me, uh, what do I think about it? I think that a child being bitten by dogs and uh, 200 stitches being delivered uh, into a four-year-old is my worst nightmare. I have two children of my own. I, I keep pit bulls with my children, and I have absolutely no fear that anything like that would happen to my children. Yvonne and Jimmy Walker, um, what happened to Jamie, your son? Jamie was attacked by a three lions as he was riding his bike. He received 21 stitches. We should be able to up now. It's happened 12 months ago, this month. But it's a psychological effect that's staying with Jamie now. He won't go into a park. So his quality of life's been impaired there. A six-year-old won't go to a park. I did, in fact, take him yesterday, and we met a man in Wheelie Castle um, walking to Alsatians in the park, and Jamie just went hysterical. I had to take him home. So it's going to be a long time again before I get him into a park. Well, there was a vote this week, of course, in the House of Commons, which we heard about at the beginning of the show. And uh, Nicholas Budgeon, Tory MP, you voted uh, against dog registration in the House of Commons. How, having heard what's going on around you for the last uh, 12 minutes, how can you justify that? Well, because I don't think it would have worked, because we already have a system of dog registration in Northern Ireland, and only a third of the dogs in Northern Ireland are registered. But that's a different point from the argument about these dogs that are bred to fight, and as you know, the Home Office announced today that they were looking at ways in which uh, those dogs could be banned. Right, OK. Uh, on the other side, uh, a fellow Tory, but uh, you, you went against the, the, the line. David Gilroy Bevan, you voted for registration. What do you think should be the situation? Should, do you think owners should be tested? Or? Well, first of all, before I come to that, right. I want to take up a point that the editor of Pitbull Terrier made. He's totally wrong. Four days ago, on the 30th of April, a neighbour's put a uh, pit bull terrier leapt over a fence, savaging a man and his daughter <coughs> called Skerritt, Mr. Harold Skerritt, aged 64, in Portsmouth. And the, the result was horrendous. Now, certainly, I think, such dogs as theirs, fighting dogs, bred for fighting for generations, or even a new brand like a pit bull terrier, <coughs> should be totally banned. I happen to disagree with Nicholas's <coughs> point of view. I'd think that the act in Northern Ireland has been successful. 
I don't think registration is all that can be done. I think that the owners should be looked at very carefully. I think that they should pass tests of confidence. You, you saw with the rugby show. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think that if we look at registration of dogs, we could be protecting the dogs as well, because if they are found on the street right. starving, then they take them to the dogs home, you could detect the owner and therefore prosecute the owner for letting the animals... I move along, the gentleman in a dark blue suit, just along there. What would you there like is to one say? question I would like to ask the MP what voted against, and I might sound personal, but I don't care two hoots. If it happened to one of his grandchildren or his own child, what way would his vote be then? It wouldn't be any different, because... Uh, 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 well, well, uh, let me explain why. Because, be, because what, is wa what is wanted is to have the existing law enforced. It, 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 that when that lady talks about this dangerous dog attacking the child, that is already a criminal offence. When we hear when we hear talk about uh, fighting between pit bull terriers, that is already a criminal offence. What we want is the existing law to be enforced, not to clutter the statute book up with laws which are not likely to be enforced. Those dogs are still, to our knowledge, alive, aren't they? Yes, they're still at the same house, and that child only lives two or three doors away. So what about if he gets out and bites somebody else? I what would you do? I would... I You're would just be... disgraceful. No, I'm not disgraceful. I would... <laughs> If you just control your, your, uh, your anger for a moment, what happened was already a criminal offence. If a dog was worrying your sheep, would you shoot the dog? If there was no other way of doing it, yes. Just imagine how you can see the owner of the dog, right? Yes. What? How would we know which owner? And how, how would we know which, um, well, which owner them dogs belong to? If I wanted to see the owner, we would never know who, well, who, let, let, who let, them dogs let, belong to. Let me explain what the problem is. Um, it, you've got to have a completely foolproof system of registration of every dog. Now, do you think that, the, that with other serious crimes going unsolved, that the police would ensure that every single dog in this country was registered? Well, I think they ought to Hang be on, let's say, yes, Jamie's parents, what happened to the dogs which uh, got Jamie? They're still living, and it's come to our knowledge that they've been seen this particular week. <coughs> in an area unleashed again in a shopping centre and he's been walking them so they are ready to attack again we've Those got the dogs. police here vernon jones are you in contrast to the dogs toothless yes i think it's i think it's important that we put things in perspective here because the vast majority of people who own dogs don't have problems with them um, and i think that needs to have that balance um, when we go on to the legislation that that we're able to enforce along with the rspca then we're looking at legislation that is in the region of 120 years old. And perhaps it's time that we readdress the situation and look for new legislation. And to that end, if I may just quote Section 2 of the Dog Act, 19, events, yeah. 1871, which is important, it goes on to say that a complaint in relation to a dangerous dog or a dog that's not kept under proper control, if it appears to be dangerous, um, can be put down or can be ordered to be put under proper control. Now, you, uh, the, 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 dogs, the dogs in your case, aren't you? They're under a death sentence, aren't they? But the, the guy is just flouting that. It's the third time they've done it, these three the, dogs. The police told me last night, he said, the dogs, I think they are, and I think this lady and gentleman live in my constituency. The dog owner is paying one pound a day a dog. per dog, dog to keep dog. them alive. That's 21 pounds a week. If For a thousand pounds, he can keep those dogs from being put down as they ought to have been put down. Ready. All right, we've got some phone calls that coming means in. the law's got to be upgraded. Even last year's law. Okay. It's inadequate. Yeah, I'll come back to you in a minute. We've got some phone calls coming in. Beverly Henderson in Birmingham has a simple solution. She says, all dogs should wear muzzles outside the house. But what about these dangerous dogs, like, you know, like pit bull terriers and rock violets? Can, can we ban them? Pit bull well, again, terriers? We're, I know we're, you, you, we're you, focusing you... on pit bull terriers here, and we're talking about attacks by Alsatians and Rottweilers and all these other breeds, and yet, we, yet we're... There's been one attack by, on the part of a pit bull terrier. How many pit bulls are there in England? Is it not true to say, um, Dr. Samusek, that uh, over 34 people have been killed by American pit bull terriers in the last four years in the United States? That's a statistic that you just cannot ignore. A, how much good have pit bull terriers been? I told you a story outside about uh, my home not being burglarized because my pit bull was home. B, how many pit bulls are there in the United States? I think the entire concept C, of keeping what kind a dog of as a people, burglar alarm is questionable me, in the first place. Uh, well, I certainly don't. I live in New York City. I don't know what it's like here, but a dog is a darn good burglar alarm where I live. 
um, see what kind of people own these dogs that are getting in this trouble. I don't think it's the dogs at all. I think maybe it's true that... Uh, Would the solution be to ban them, though? If we were to, could we ban pit bulls? No, I think the solution is to find something to do to the people who uh, abuse these dogs, who are turning these simple puppy dogs, as I call them, into weapons, and uh, teach them that this is not legal. Is it possible to ban them? What would you do if they were banned? Breed another dog? Or... Oh, I, I, I can name 25 breeds that are just as effective as, at stopping men as the pit bull is. Okay, hands up. Yes, you, sir. There's a, there's a lot of talk about um, muzzling in the papers. And when I see that, it's, it's a lot, it's far too difficult to control, and it's only outside the house, and a lot of these problems happen within the family. Um, do, the way I see it, if the next-door neighbour had one of these dogs over the fence and in the garden, and it, I thought there was a danger of it attacking my kid, I'd feel no... No problems at all about shooting it. Yes. Um, do, do, do these I guys would agree? I. I would. Do these guys would, would these guys agree with um, a, a law being passed whereby owners are held directly responsible for the actions of their dog directly? I thought I just heard him say, but they are already. They certainly are in the United States, and I'm sure they must be here too. The no, problem, the problem. Your hand's been up all the way along, sir. What would you like to yeah, say? The, the, gentleman, the American gentleman said that uh, we've only uh, identified one attack by a pit bull terrier. I personally was attacked by a pit bull terrier, which unfortunately lives next door to me. I Fortunately, it was winter and I had a thick pair of boots on and a thick pair of jeans. Tell me about the but guy it who badly that bruised dog. it. This dog, then the next year, attacked my dog, causing Tell me about, the person about who 60 the dog. pounds worth of vet's bills. He has attacked elderly people. He has attacked ordinary men. Does he, he live in that house children. by himself, or is there a he person there too? Other dogs. Now he's been to court three times. We're not pushing it because he said if the dog's put down, he's going to buy an Alsatian, and quite frankly, that terrifies us. Well, but well, something. Well, let me tell you, if you lived, if you lived across the fence from me, if you lived across the fence. Well, okay, from New York City is a very dangerous. New York City is a very dangerous place, but so are these dogs. But now we're backstreet breeders who knowingly breed from vicious dogs are to blame says uh, Jackie Wilson from Gloucester. Now, why do you want to own, uh, both of you can answer this, why are you so fascinated by owning fighting dogs? They have, they've been proven to have been dangerous. <laughs> one, why own a fighting dog? One, uh, there's no need to answer that question. It's what I like to do, and that's, uh, that's it. That's answer enough, I think. Two is uh, they're great dogs. They love you. Oh, you're sick, you are. Ah, I'm not sick. <laughs> You've got a peculiar look on your face. Okay, over here, there's a lady over here. We can send a microphone around in the colourful shirt. What would you like to say? I think it's an ego trip. I think it's a bit uh, like the compared with uh, my car's bigger than yours or something oh, yeah. like that. I think you've probably got a big dog because you can't you know, I only have a metro. Hang on one second. And down here, you with the, with the grey. Basically, you've already said it before. It's the, the responsibility of the irresponsible owners. Yeah. End of story. Would his opinion change if one of them dogs killed it? His own children. I think we've been over that, and I think you're you know, I, I, I can read a dog's face pretty carefully. I have no qualms about having pit bulls if in the, the house with my kid. If your child, would you destroy if the next day? I was going to say earlier that if I had a next-door neighbor and my dog jumped the fence and bit my next-door neighbor, he wouldn't have to kill that dog. What would I you would. do with the dog I would. if it killed your child? Of course I'd kill the dog. I'd kill it long before it That's killed my child. Oh, be your Craig Mitchell, hang on one second. We can't all speak at once. I'll try and get around everyone. Now, Craig Mitchell, solicitor, your mother's a dog breeder. What do you think of these dangerous dogs? They, they terrify me. I think they terrify the general public. Mm -hmm. What really concerns me is that these animals are so dangerous in the wrong hands that they're like weapons. So how do we vet the owners? I, th I think that they should be treated in exactly the same way as firearms. Yeah. Shotguns, yeah. firearms. Yeah. You don't license the dog, you license the owners. License the owners. Would you like to be licensed? Should you, go, you be licensed? You go and check I am them. licensed. I live in the United States. We're all licensed. I... I... <coughs> what about you? Uh, do, you think, do you think the owners should be licensed, Mr. Graham? In criminal phase. Hang on one second. Do you think the owners... <laughs> no, come on. No, keep it, keep it fair. You know, please. I think you must get this, this thing with people in perspective. I think they're one of the soundest dogs with people. The percentage, of pe the percentage of people that are, are nasty with people is very small compared to most people. <coughs> yeah, but I would accept the fact that when they are that way, they're extremely dangerous. But the majority of people owners who see any signs like that in a dog will put them down. <coughs> and if I owned the Rottweiler that had attacked their child, they would already be dead. If either of my dogs were in the least bit suspect, they would already be dead. My dogs are fine. My, I've got a young son. I'm not going to risk his life with... with with bad dogs. Gross. How many people got injured then? Just killed. Ladies and gentlemen, we're running out of time. The last word, David Gilroy Bevan, you're fighting this. Are you going to carry on fighting this? Absolutely. One and what's more, after listening tonight and hearing what I've heard, not only do I think that some breeds should be banned, 
but I'm quite certain that some owners should be prevented from breeding yeah, or from owning. Yeah. Or on that debate goes to Tony Morton who phoned in from Hereford and he asks how can an owner